Okay, so logical conclusions of the ideologies we've seen being pushed. Okay, I'm going to show you guys a really, really radical example of this that I think absolutely drive home this point. And I even reached out to some of my friends who are progressives to be like, am I tracking here? Because this sounds like if, if what you believe is true in terms of some of this stuff, this is the logical conclusion of it. Okay, and so I want to highlight someone that I'm not endorsing. And I'm not saying this person has all the answers, but this is a channel that I reached out to back in 2018, 2019, because I heard them reference passively that they were uh, grew up in church. Okay, the channel is the Almonte Films, and this creator is someone that again I kept up with for uh, a couple years early on. This is before there was as many creators on YouTube, and they just made pretty cool documentaries, vlog styles, artistic stuff. And this is early on, as I'm trying to get on YouTube and I'm trying to kind of figure out what people were doing. I was checking out this creator. They were not a Christian creator at all. Well, they disappeared. And yesterday, they put out a video called I'm Alive. Not yesterday, this week. They put out a video called I'm Alive, right here. And there's a uh, the creator's name is Jeffrey. He goes by Nova now. And he shares his testimony in this two-and-a-half-hour video. If you guys want to watch it and kind of hear some of the stories, he's still working through a lot of stuff. Um, not an endorsement of, of this person and all the stuff around them, but there's a specific part I want to highlight where he gets into the conclusions of some of this ideology, and and I'm going to challenge us to do something with the, the, the concept of deconstruction, but in a totally different way. So let's jump into this, and uh, and I'll give you guys my thoughts. I'm going to pull this back a little bit. So this is named Jeffrey slash Nova. Um, he's a kid from... I believe he's from Harlem, and uh, in this video, he talks about coming out uh, in terms of being a Christian now. Okay, now, I, I'm not saying he's a Christian creator. Uh, his, his entire paradigm is, is very interesting, uh, to say the least, but uh, check this out. There's no profanity in this, but it is very, it's adult-oriented, so if you have little ones around, uh, just be warned. And I had, then I became a relationship anarchist. I had multiple relationships, five, six different girlfriends, two nephews. So as he's getting popping, he becomes a relationship anarchist. He gets into polyamory, nesting, all this stuff. Okay, and listen to how he breaks this down. Nesting partners and several girlfriends outside of that. And then multiple other women that were friends with benefits or just like, it was a whole web. It was a whole web of polyamory and a whole philosophy of freedom and hedonism. And, and if you truly love somebody, you won't want to control them. You, you'll let them give into the desires of their flesh. And, and you know, you'll live your life honestly. And it was this moral grandstanding where if something feels good, then therefore it is good. That Moral grandstanding, if something feels good, therefore it is good. Now, this kid grew up leading worship in church, okay? And he drifted from the faith and went to a very, very dangerous, radical extreme. But listen to how he lays this out logically and tell me if this isn't the logical conclusion of some of the stuff that's being pushed in culture right now. We should just cater to our feelings and the feelings of others. And so politically where I was, there was a lot of that. And so now I was submerged into this and my dissociation had become so bad. So, so, so listen to this one point. He says, politically, politically, politically where I was. Listen. A lot of that. And so now I was submerged feelings of others. And so politically where I was, there was a lot of that. And so now I was submerged into this. I had voices in my head and these voices would often take over and they would do certain things. Like part of me wanted to be monogamous and be with one person. Right. And I'll be this with this one person and I'll feel so guilty because I wanted to be with this one person. But then another part of me or another person in me was polyamorous. And so it was a tug of war where I would get into either get in a monogamous relationship and then become this other person that would be a cheater. Or if they didn't cheat and they were honest and they wanted to end the relationship, they would end the relationship only to the, only to the demise of the entire system of people that I was. There was even a person in me named Enigma who had their own style of music that they would make. We each had our own different talents skills even disabilities like for example like i wear glasses right where there, there was a time where i could i had 20 20 vision but then there were days where if i was someone else i wouldn't have 20 20 vision and i'm saying i as like the entire system but at this point in time i truly was multiple persons in one brain and okay all of this sounds extremely spooky he's talking about this association it's, 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 it's wild stuff. And again, he gets deeper and deeper, but listen to what he what he's about to say next. I had felt also, it had always felt weird to me when people called me young man. And I thought maybe it's because I'm a boy, like I'm a little boy when I was 12, the first time people called me young man. But then I was actually a young man. Every time people called me a man, it just felt strange to me. Like that's not who I was. I had thought that it was because I was non-binary. He doesn't feel right being called young man. So he starts thinking he's non-binary, which then leads to him doing this sort of stuff identified as non-binary for a long time. Like I remember the first time I was 
laying down with one of my nesting partners at the time. I was like, I don't feel like I'm a man. She was like, so do you think you're a woman? And I was like, that's what's even harder about it. I don't feel like I'm a woman either. Like, I don't feel like I'm a man nor a woman. But the issue was really on a deeper level, I did not feel human. I always felt alien. Like since I was a kid, I had this dissociation where it felt like I was here. Like I was placed here. I just woke up and I was here in this weird dream. In my mind, I didn't belong here, but I kind of did belong here. Like I was sent to do something. I didn't know what that something was. I was just sent here and my memory was wiped clean. And I had no idea why I was here and why I had to experience all the things that I had to experience. And when I would know what I was supposed to do. So yeah, I was non-binary, which to some people is considered gender, to some people is not considered uh, I didn't really consider myself a part of the LGBT community, but people made me a part of it. Like that, you know, they would consider me a part of the LGBT community. I also started to become out of nowhere attracted to trans women because and this just escalates and escalates and escalates to it all kind of hits the fan for this young man nothing meant anything gender didn't mean anything morality didn't mean anything you know everything was a social construct he says nothing meant anything because gender didn't mean anything morality didn't mean anything everything was a so social construct this is this sounding familiar because if this is the logical conclusion of the world that we live in is that if there's no God, there is no design, or we are our own God, therefore we choose the design. So then everything is a social construct. Marriage is a social construct. So what does it mean? What does it mean if it's uh, God said one man, one woman? Why? We don't like that. What do you mean? You 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 know you believe a baby should have rights. What do you mean? People should have certain dignities extended to them. So everything becomes a social construct. Listen closely to what he says. Gender didn't mean anything. Morality didn't mean anything. You know, everything was a social construct. Relationships were a social construct. Marriage was a social construct. Gender was a social construct. And I was just a horrible, horrible person. Just the things that I would do, like the lies that I would tell, just to hide the fact that, just to hide my lust, to hide the shame. And it was because I had like this capacity to love multiple people. I saw people as as part of who I was. And so I was able to love people deeply, but I would love people so deeply that it's like I psyched myself. It's like, I can't tell this person the truth that I love this other person as well because it's gonna hurt them. And even when I was polyamorous, it's like, okay, I told these two people that it's just gonna be them, but now I have feelings for someone else and I have to say that to them. And I care about their feelings, which was delusional because no, it's not that you, it's selfish. You're not hiding the truth from someone because you care about them. You're hiding the truth because you care about your image and how you appear. And you mm. want those people to continue to behave and love you in the same way now as if it were just you versus then if it were just you and them and someone else. You don't want them to decide that, hmm, maybe I'm gonna go look for somebody else. And in your mind when you say, hmm, yeah, I'm gonna be polyamorous, completely open and everybody can see everybody. If y'all wanna date other people, you have to date other people. Truly, it's because you think you're relinquishing control, but really, that is your way of having control. Because in that way, you compartmentalize in a way, so if they go with somebody else, it's like, oh, well, that's okay. They're free to do that. As if you're giving them permission to leave you. And so since you're holding the door open, when someone walks out of your life, that sense of abandonment, that's the way you cope with that sense of abandonment. It's not that you're actually giving someone control out of you being selfless because you love better than monogamous people. It's because- So are you guys catching what he's saying? Like, like you guys understand that 30% of Gen Z identifies as a part of the LGTV community. 30%. Here's why. Here's why. And this this sort of thinking is is creeping into the church. This sort of deconstructionist, which, by the way, go and look up what the deconstructionists also believed about other things. The deconstructionists, the French philosophers of the 60s and the stuff they were into and the views they had about uh, uh, little children, right? And this, this sort of stuff then extends to people in the church— and you start, quote unquote, deconstructing your faith. I have a better proposition for you, though. And this is the logical conclusion of this stuff. Is then you start looking at scripture and you start twisting scripture and you go, well, what's, what's wrong with polyamory? I mean, Solomon had a thousand wives, not reading how the freaking story ended. David had multiple wives, not reading how the freaking story ended. So you start thinking these sorts of things, which leads to more mental illness, which leads to harder pair bonding later down the road because you keep ha you be being more and more promiscuous. You start... He said he got into trans women, right? You, 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 you deconstruct all these quote unquote social constructs and it's where you end up. Now, thankfully, this man came back to Jesus, right? And he, and, and, and in his video, he's very bold about his faith. Let, let me let him cook a little more. 
you, you, you have so much love to give that you just want to love everyone. But then you're out and, and he's saying all that's nonsense. This idea that you have so much love to give that you can love multiple people when you want to give all this love away and you don't want to control people. He's saying you're just doing that because you're insecure and you want to keep the door open for yourself in case they leave you. You're lying still. And then even when I was honest, there was a time where I finally became honest with everyone. Even still, it, it still became as like when you're telling someone and you're honest, you still feel guilty as though something in you is telling you this is wrong. Even though you're consenting to this, I'm consenting to this. We have consensual boundaries. By the way, which is which is uh, uh, what are the what are the things that are highest viewed in this crazy leftist ideology? Right? Is what is is authenticity, honesty, and consent. So we're going to remove truth, and we're going to just say your honesty, your truth. Remove the capital T truth, which is Jesus. We're going to say your honesty, your truth. We're going to remove restraint. We're going to say. Uh, be authentic. Don't have restraint with your words. Be authentic. We're going to remove the sanctity of marriage and the parameters of one man, one woman for marriage. And we're going to say, you know what? The only value that matters is not with the vows that you give before uh, uh, God and before people in the confines of a, of a marriage ceremony. The only values that matter in that regard is consent. Do you consent to each other? Right? And so you, you know, it's a perversion. It's a perverted version and it becomes its own religion. Now, I have an alternative for you, so just, just bear with me. This is still wrong. That's right. Just because someone consents to something, just because someone says it's okay for you to slap them or throw them off a cliff, it doesn't mean that it's okay. There's only one person that declares what is righteous and what is not righteous. It's not this anarchistic, dem democratic society where everyone decides what's wrong and what's right. That's mm -hmm. not the way kingdom works. It's That's a right. kingdom. It's not a democracy. That's and right. there's a head of a kingdom. That's right. There's not no way we get to inject our uneducated opinions on righteousness and it automatically makes something righteous. Whew. This is why what's right and what's wrong, in a sense, my philosophy at that time was true. There is no right and wrong. In the mm -hmm. wisdom of the world and the righteousness of man, there is no right or wrong. Because if you're telling me now that no one should be able to tell me, no one should be able to stifle my pursuit of happiness, what if my pursuit of happiness is murder? You're going to put a boundary on that. Oh, well, you can't compare that to, you know, who you want to marry or... There's a boundary for everything. There's a boundary mm -hmm. for who you can have sex with, when you can have sex with them, mm -hmm. where you can have sex with them. Two consenting adults can't just go out into the street and have sex. That's, that's right. against the law. That's right. Why is it against the law? Is it just like, oh, that's just a law. It doesn't mean anything as long as no one catches you. Things are put into place for certain reasons. And yes, there are just laws and there are unjust laws in the world. But we have to think about the fact that there are boundaries. That's right. People will take pleasure and say, just because it's my pleasure, it's because it's what makes me happy that that's okay, that everyone should just respect that I want to be happy, and no one should have any question as to what makes me happy. When really I could think it's making me happy, but it's making me sick. Mm. Because if I go put a needle in my arm and get high, it's making me happy in that moment. That's what I think, is th that is my ceiling for happiness. Mm -hmm. Does that mean somebody else can't come to me and say, look, there's a better way, there's a higher path than this? There's true righteousness, there's, true, there's a true freedom come from on. all the pain that you're feeling right now that you're trying to escape? There's a true freedom and his name is Jesus? That's right. It's wrong for someone to come and tell me that. It's wrong for someone to come out as a Christian and say, I found something that has made me truly happy. Mm -hmm. Everyone looks at you like you're crazy. You're this crazy judgmental person. Oh, but you can have your ideology and come out as whatever you like and then judge others who don't who don't follow what you follow. You can, That's okay. Your intolerance mm. is okay. Mm. Because you won't tolerate intolerance. But I got to tolerate your intolerance. And so these are the contradictions of the righteousness of the world. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was in. That's the Sheesh, man. Shout out to um, Jeffrey Nova. Uh, I, th I think he's crushing it. So here's, here's, here's a practical application point. Those of you guys that are like, man, I've had church hurt. I've met these people from this community and they are, uh, they're nice. And they made me question everything about my faith. I, I, I've, I've seen some things, some, some terrible things from uh, celebrity pastors, megachurch pastors, whatever. Here's what I want you guys to do. Instead of going and, and saying, I'm going to deconstruct I'm going to deconstruct this. I'm going to deconstruct God's way and God's word. I'm going to deconstruct this. Here's what I want you guys to do instead. And I, and I found myself doing this in the last four or five years, probably longer. Instead of trying to deconstruct your faith, I would challenge us to deconstruct our political ideologies that's attempting to influence our faith. I believe the saying goes, if you're under 35 and not a liberal, you have no heart. And if you're over 35 and not a conservative, you have no brain. We've heard that. But it, but it, but there's a degree of truth to it. So if you're going through life and you have certain ideologies, maybe from a good place. Hey, I feel like this 
These people have been mistreated. That's probably true. Hey, I feel like this group has been disenfranchised. There, there might be some truth to that. However, deconstruct your idea, your political ideology and say, does this reflect scripture? There's a lot of people that I meet that are somehow empathetic, hyper empathetic to a woman's right to delete babies because her financial and educational self-actualization usurps the dignity of life. You got to deconstruct that ideology and say, is that what scripture teaches? That is a political ideology that's actually becoming its own religion. It has its own heresies. It has its own lines that are being drawn. It has its own dogmas. Deconstruct your political lean, all of them, and say, did they line up with scripture on the left and the right? On the left and the right. Deconstruct those and say, do, do, do the, the things that I'm being indoctrinated with, that this group of people is all inherently racist and they don't even know it and they have no choice about it. Is that what the scriptures say? This, this group of people, they're just genetically inferior and they have no choice about it. Is that what the scriptures say? Or does the scripture say all people are created in the image of God and all of us are broken and sinful and all of us have the, the ability to, to cause partiality, to, to, to sin in, with partiality, right? Deconstruct your ideology. So here's another one that's, that's very prevalent. The world is defined in oppressor and oppressed categories. Everyone is one of the two. And if you are a part of a certain intersectional hierarchy where you're a part of this uh, gender and a part of this uh, non-gender or a part of this ethnicity with these disabilities, well, then you're higher and your voice matters more and your experience. And if you're not, and if you're uh, a white cisgendered male, well, then you're, you, you're lower on the totem pole and we shouldn't listen to you, right? Is that biblical? So deconstruct these political ideologies, which is really a new religion, and say, if I deconstruct these things, do these things line up with scripture? And, and I came to the conclusion that a lot of the stuff that we're indoctrinated with very subtly don't, uh, don't align up with, with the Word of God. From our view of the unborn to our view of, of, of what shouldn't be permissible to our view of what is, who is and who can and can't be racist to our view of who is and isn't inferior to our view of accountability in certain institutions, but not in other institutions. Deconstruct those views. And again, I'm not saying that that's left or right. I'm saying that's across the board. There's a lot of folks that want a lot of accountability for the FBI right now, but still have zero desire to have accountability in law enforcement. That's wrong to me. That's police unions, right? So I'm saying on both sides and say, okay, what are my views on this? Because you can, by the way, both things could be true. You could say, hey, I think that we should promote family. We should promote God. We should promote freedom. Right? We shouldn't try to transform the kids at the same time. If police misbehave, there should be accountability. There should be body cameras. There should, right? Both things can be true at the same time. Hey, we should stand for a one man, one woman marriage, but these people over here who sin differently should not be uh, uh, mistreated and should not be bullied and should not be uh, physically abused. And, like both things can be true. Both things can be true. And so I think, I think. Deconstruct your political ideologies. We see according to the Bible that prayer is extremely important in terms of us being transformed from the inside out when we get aligned with God's will. For the Christians watching this channel, I want you guys to implement these spiritual disciplines in your day-to-day -day life. And the only way I've been able to do this consistently is through writing down my prayers in a prayer journal that does a few things. One, it allows me to reflect and come to God humbly and ask him to move on my behalf. And two, it allows me to document my prayers, which ultimately helped me remember the very things that I was praying for and see the hand of God tangibly in my life when he answers them. So I would urge you, consider writing down your prayers. It could be in a blank notebook. It could even be on your phone. Or you could check out the one I personally designed and used from my own quiet time and spiritual discipline that I think will be a huge blessing. It's the exact structure and system that I've used for years to pray and be more consistent in my spiritual disciplines. You can pick yours up today by clicking the link in the pinned comment below. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace.